uh, Anis, you can take it away. Okay. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, can everybody see my slides now or do you see me? See you. Okay. One second, please. Um, my name is Thomas de Veldhuis and um, I'm a professor at McAllister uh, College and I would like to share today with you uh, some experiences uh, that I had last semester when I taught uh, an introductory physics course uh, that was taught in the context of high power rocketry and uh, space exploration. Um, let's see. So I'm going to try to share my slides now with you. Okay, so um, um, just to tell you about the main idea, um, it was to teach physics, in particular introductory mechanics, and a number of other important skills to students in a very hands-on, fun way by using rockets uh, as a context, um, uh, to let the students play and, and learn at the same time, and to keep them engaged with real life applications. I have two small children uh, and they play all the time and they learn all the time. So I thought I can emulate that then um, students will be able to, to learn uh, physics very effect effectively. And uh, this idea was inspired by uh, video lessons offered by um, Minnesota Space Grant uh, Associate Director James Flatten in the fall of 2017. And I had just joined um, the, uh, as a PI, um, the McAllister subcontract uh, of Space Grant and I, I saw his email that I, I copied on my, my slide here announcing that he was going to offer um, video lessons to teach um, uh, students at different uh, colleges and universities how to uh, build a high power um, rocket. Uh, and so we signed up a team of students here at McAllister for the first time and I, I was very impressed and amazed by what I saw. The students were really involved. They um, um, followed the lessons, uh, they built a rocket, uh, they were having fun, they learned a lot of physics in the process, and they learned a lot of other skills in the process, uh, and they were um, uh, enthusiastic when they actually got to launch the rocket and, and it worked as, uh, as it had been designed. And I, I thought, well, if I can emulate this with a, with a, uh, a class of students, a regular class, then uh, that would be a very good way to, to teach physics. Um, so a little bit more about McAllister College. Uh, we are a um, uh, liberal arts college in St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. We have about 2000 students. Uh, we only have undergraduate programs uh, and uh, we are fortunate to have rather small class sizes uh, varying from about 35 in introductory physics classes to uh, about a dozen in the um, upper level uh, physics classes. And then a little bit more about me. I'm a, a theoretical uh, particle physicist. I've been at McAllister for 16 years. Uh, I teach a variety of courses, including introductory physics courses, uh, advanced courses in classical mechanics and quantum mechanics, um, advanced elective courses in um, advanced quantum mechanics and electromagnetic radiation, and special topics courses that are related to the research that I'm doing in elementary particle physics and general relativity. Um, so then a little bit more about the course that I taught. It's um, a first year course. That means only first year students uh, could enroll in it. There was a total number of 17 students um, and it uh, satisfied a number of requirements here at McAllister, including quantitative reasoning. It also satisfied uh, a writing requirements that most first year courses here at McAllister do. Um, it satisfied the distribution requirement for the natural sciences. And it was equivalent to uh, Principles of Physics 1, which is our regular introductory calculus-based physics course in mechanics. And a little bit about the students who were taking the course, they um, all had at least some high school calculus and some high school uh, physics. Another interesting thing to note is that all the students in my class were living on the same floor in a dorm. Um, and uh, one of the additional goals besides learning physics and writing 
uh, of these first year courses is to create community among the students, make sure they uh, feel at home during their first semester here at McAllister and make them familiar with uh, some of the services and offices that, that are located here on, uh, on campus. So here is a, uh, an excerpt from the uh, syllabus for the course, uh, course. And so it says rocket science is a rocketry themed calculus based introductory physics course for first year students only. And the course covers standard material, including Newton's laws, conservation of energy, momentum, kind of this, the usual topics that are taught in, uh, in introductory mechanics classes. But instead of a conventional lab, the course includes a hands-on semester long project where students design, uh, simulate, build, and fly their own high power rockets. And apart from the rocket building product project, evaluation will take the form of regular problem sets, exams, short papers, and uh, a research paper. And I also gave an overview of the relative weight of these different uh, course um, components. But my idea was to, to teach uh, mechanics in the context of rocket science and space explorations and uh, therefore try as much as possible to use examples um, um, from rocketry or space science uh, to illustrate the material that I was teaching in the class. Um, so what were the topics covered? Well, kind of the regular topics that uh, are in the standard mechanics course, but in uh, orange I kind of highlighted behind each topic the, uh, the way I, uh, I related it to um, um, uh, rocketry or uh, space exploration. Um, so for example, when we talked about drag, um, talked about drag on uh, high power rockets, drag in the terms of parachutes, when we talked about conservation momentum, uh, I discussed the rocket uh, equations uh, as an application um, to explain how rocket engines work. Um, we spent quite a bit of uh, time, more than in a regular course, on um, mechanics on orbital uh, dynamics. Uh, we discussed the uh, Hohmann transfers, slingshot um, mechanism, and um, Oberth, Oberth uh, mechanism, things that I usually teach in upper level courses, but uh, because of the focus of the course, I thought these were uh, fun things to, to, uh, to discuss. And uh, so most of the homework and mostly the exam uh, questions were related to, to rocket uh, science. Uh, for example, uh, here on this slide, you see a homework assignment that was about the yo-yo uh, the spin mechanism. Uh, and it probed uh, students' understanding of uh, conservation of mechanical energy and conservation of uh, angular momentum. So I tried to always provide a context for problems uh, that was related to real life aspects of, uh, of uh, spacecraft. Here is a, uh, an exam uh, question. Um, uh, here I uh, discussed uh, some aspect of the Ariane 5 uh, heavy uh, launch vehicle. Um, with real numbers, of course, um, kind of in a simplified um, version, um, kind of ignoring drag, which we uh, switched on uh, later and discussed that as well. But uh, I always try to, to find problem, create problems that um, were um, um, discussing real life um, applications and students really appreciated that, I think. Okay, then uh, a big part of the course was the rocket build project. Um, this would not have been possible without the support of James Flatten. Um, he was a mentor uh, to our students. He did the quality control to make sure that everything was built uh, correctly. Uh, he is certified and so we're able to uh, fly our rockets uh, under his supervision. Uh, and also we received support from the uh, Minnesota Space Grant Consortium, in particular all the, the building materials that we used to uh, build the rockets uh, were sponsored by uh, the Space Grant Organization. Uh, so I had 70 students, I let them work in groups of four uh, or five. Um, and the rocket that they built was essentially the same one as the one that uh, James Flatten introduced when he taught his uh, video lessons. The actual lab was uh, conducted uh, by James Cannon, who is the president of the McAllister High Power Rocketry Team. Um, and he did a fantastic job, it was very organized um, and great at relating to the students. It took uh, the students eight weeks to build uh, the rocket. And the way we had organized it uh, was as follows. Uh, we had one hour every week in which we met with the whole class and we set out the goals for that particular week. And then uh, students could come in on their own and build uh, whenever they had time and uh, were available. 
Uh, and then James was available in the lab for 10 hours a week so that if students had questions or needed some assistance, they could uh, approach him. Uh, students otherwise had free access to the lab room to do their work. Uh, they used Open Rocket as a simulation tool uh, and they wrote pre-flight uh, reports and post-flight analysis reports um, very much like uh, is required uh, by James uh, when he organizes uh, rocketry competitions. Uh, uh, and so that was a, a good way to uh, do some of the evaluation uh, for, the, uh, for the project. Um, so apart from learning a lot of physics, uh, the students learned a lot of other uh, skills. And I think that's in particular important for first year students who are just going to college. They learned how to work as a team. Uh, they learned how to plan and schedule. Uh, some of them had no experience uh, working with tools, so it was very good for them to, to finally uh, get to um, actually use, uh, use equipment and, and build things. They had to test components, they had to integrate different components, uh, they used simulation tools on the computer, they had to carefully document their progress, um, they had to acquire data with a sensor and then do the data analysis, all kind of very useful skills, transferable skills that they, they will use uh, whether they are becoming a, a physics major uh, or not. Um, and uh, as an added benefit, benefit uh, students worked long hours in the lab to build the rocket and that created uh, cohesion within the group and they really uh, bonded over, over their work. Um, so here are uh, some pictures. On the left picture you see in the red coat, uh, James Cannon um, helping students to uh, insert a rocket engine in, in a rocket. On the right side is my whole class, all 70 students uh, and including me, at the launch site in uh, North Rens, Minnesota, uh, where we uh, launched the four rockets in uh, November of 2018. As you can see, uh, it was a cold day. Um, we all were bundled up, but we had uh, great fun. Um, here you see uh, one particular rocket, it was called Sputnik, blue and yellow, being prepared on the launch pad. And then on the right, you see how it was actually launched. The dual deploy parachute mechanism worked uh, flawlessly. And in the lower right, you see how the uh, students retrieved their, their rocket after a successful uh, flight. Then we also included some writing instructions in, in this course. It was a scaffolded approach, uh, five assignments, uh, increasing complexity. It started out with just reading a, an original research paper and writing a summary, uh, then a comparison of two research paper, uh, followed by a mini literature review on a particular topic, and uh, accumulated into um, a 20-page uh, uh, research uh, paper. And the uh, theme of these papers was a crude mission uh, to Mars, and it turned out to be a broad enough uh, theme to let students explore their own interests. So the uh, topics varied from psychological effects to, of long-term isolation to biological radiation damage, um, effects due to microgravity, uh, rocket propulsion, gender bias in crew selections, kind of uh, the interest reflected the interest of the students here at McAllister. Um, I had a teaching assistant for that aspect of the course too. Her name was Maya Willis, another uh, McAllister High Power Rocketry team member who did a fantastic uh, job. There were multiple rounds of peer review for each of the uh, papers that the students wrote, including review by fellow students, uh, by the writing assistant and by me. Um, and so students learned to write professionally in their own voice. Um, they learned how to do literature research. Uh, they learned how to cite the work of others. Um, they um, learned how to evaluate it can candidly the work of other people and also how to deal with criticism on their own uh, work. So also a very useful and successful experience. And here is one of the, uh, the title pages of one of the papers that one of the students in the class wrote. Um, this one was actually nominated for um, a writing award uh, at McAllister. Okay, so uh, my conclusions. Uh, the end of the semester evaluations of the course showed that students really enjoyed the course. I think the consensus was that they felt challenged, uh, that they had to work hard to keep up, uh, that they learned a lot uh, and had fun at the same uh, time. Uh, and my own impression was, um, was similar. Um, there was a lot of cohesion in the group. They could get along. They did things outside of class together um, as well. Um, and the homework and the exam showed that they were developing a good understanding of the physics. And so I conclude that uh, teaching physics this way is a, is a very effective way to do it uh, and students learn um, a lot of things uh, beyond physics. So in my opinion, uh, the various elements of the course, uh, both the lecture um, element uh, and the uh, uh, rocket building project uh, and the writing project would be 
successfully replicated at other institutions. Uh, and I would be happy uh, to engage with, uh, with any of you if you have more questions about uh, how things worked uh, and would like to discuss in, in more detail. Thank you, and I would be happy to uh, uh, respond to some questions. This is Brenda Violetel from Michigan. I can't say that I have a question, but um, I just wanted to thank you for the talk. It was really interesting. Well done. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, let, let's see if they can hear us. Can you hear us? Yes, we heard you. Ah, Hi. wonderful. Okay. okay, this is actually the entire Indiana Space Grant affiliate meeting. Uh, uh, from Anderson, Indiana, and yeah. we've got a question here. Yeah, so my question is, what size rockets are you using? Were they uh, like Estes engines, or were they ones that you built your own and created your own fuel? They, they were H and I class engines. Uh, they reached a height of about uh, a little over 2,000 feet. Okay. And what about um, what about any safety concerns about flying boats? Uh, yeah, well, we, um, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, had uh, great uh, mentorship from uh, James Flatten, the associate director of our uh, consortium here in, uh, in uh, Minnesota. Uh, he came several times um, to our class uh, to inspect the rockets that were uh, being built. Um, the students really did a good job documenting their progress. They took pictures while they were building and James uh, Flatten looked at those pictures. And so at all stages, there was, uh, there was uh, checks and balances uh, because of his expertise and his experience. Okay, one more question. Did you instrument them, like cameras or altimeters, anything like that? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you have any instrumentation on the rockets, cameras? Yes, we had altimeters on board, and so the students collected data, and in their post-analysis uh, flight report, they, uh, they analyzed that data, and. Uh, compared it to their simulations and also to some analytical calculations they had done uh, themselves. Thank you. Any other questions? There, there was a, somebody, um, I saw a message on the screen who asked uh, what was, uh, how much did it cost? Uh, and I think we budgeted um, uh, $400 uh, per rocket. Jonas, this is James. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, uh, Jay Staker from Iowa writes, do you have data that indicates how the learning compared to students who didn't take physics this way? Were there other sections, for instance? Um, yeah, we did have two other sections of regular introductory uh, physics, um, but we have not done a, um, a comparison between uh, the understanding uh, of the students who took the regular physics and the students in my class. I think that would have been very interesting and I think uh, if I do this next time uh, that's definitely something to, uh, to do. On the other hand your sense based on your own teaching of introductory physics in the past was that this went well. Yes uh, I've been teaching introductory physics uh, most semesters well for the 15 years that I've been at McAllister and, and so for my, my anecdotal my own uh, view um, of having this experience and, and looking how these uh, students did compared to uh, students in my, in my normal uh, introductory physics classes, I think it was a really successful uh, experience. There may be a little bit of bias because students uh, selected uh, my course, and, and so I think um, uh, maybe on average the students in my uh, rocket science uh, 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 class had a, a better preparation in physics and math, and maybe were more interested in, in, in physics. So uh, that aspect is there, um, and I don't know exactly how to um, eliminate that, that factor. But, but I, I do believe that they learned a lot of physics kind of uh, looking at uh, how they came in and, and what they understood uh, when, they, uh, when they were done with the course. And I did, uh, in some aspects, uh, teach uh, um, some elements that I usually teach in classical mechanics. For example, when we uh, talked about orbital dynamics, uh, I talked about Laplace Runge lens factor, um, really uh, did more detailed analysis of the, uh, of the orbital dynamics. And, um, and I think because the students uh, were building their own rockets and, and were basically immersed in this field, they, they really lived up to that uh, expectation. Okay, I see some other questions, but we really need to move on. But your, your contact information is available and people can keep in touch with you. Uh, thanks again, Thomas.
Well, thank you very much.